Hi everyone, Shirtline here. Let's talk about stages in Gundam vs games. Now some of you might think that I'm talking about the cycle of getting into a specific generation of the Gundam vs games, being surprised by the changes and features, profusely cursing, then subsequently labbing it out, playing matches, looking up guides and eventually just getting used to the game's proverbial ecosystem. This time I'll be covering the various stages where the battles in Gundam vs take place. Most of these follow a simple pattern, some generic terrain, offering various amounts of destructible cover, elevation and so on. Depending on the game, you can also run into some stages that contain water or zero gravity, which in turn makes the combat feel a little different. But let's not get too far ahead, I'll cover them all, starting with the oldest releases. Speaking of which, in Federation vs Eon, the first entry in the series, most of the playable stages were the regular grounded sort, made as homages to the landscapes of the original 1979 anime. To name a few, there's Site 7, Texas Colony, Abawa Ku, Grand Canyon, New York, and of course Jabro. You can also stumble upon stages containing deep water, namely the Pacific Ocean, the outside of Jabro, Belfast, and the specific island which appeared in episode 15. The addition of water does change up a few things. For example, making it harder to see the submerged mobile suits, slightly reducing the mobility for standard ground units, and making the amphibious sea on units truly shine. In addition to the faster movement, mobile suits like the Egg Guy also gain the ability to cruise through the water, which kinda works like the mobile armor mode from the later entries. You also don't consume boost when jumping and dodging, which is a large advantage all things considered. Another thing to note is that the game also distinguishes between space compatible and ground compatible mobile suits, meaning that you can use the gun cannon in both space and on the ground, but you can't really take a gog for a walk on the moon or mountain hike with a Zeong. Speaking of space, there's also zero gravity stages, which are a bit more annoying to play on, as the units in zero G drift around, the angles become weird, and so on. Now don't get me wrong, they are still somewhat fun, but the regular stages in the space category are much better in my humble opinion. Its sequel, Gundam vs Zeta Gundam, basically took the stuff from the previous games, but added much more stuff. The addition of Green Noah, Hong Kong City, another Jabro stage, the car, and so on, wasn't that surprising, and the whole roster, being playable regardless of the team you picked, was a welcome change too. New stages, new mobile suits, nothing out of the ordinary. Starting with the seed entries, the zero gravity stages got phased out, to the collective applause of many competitive players. Another nice change is that the gimmick with space and ground compatibility got completely ditched, meaning that there's no more arbitrary restrictions on what you can play on which stages. The stage select also features the option to randomly select from ground and colony stages in case you're not a fan of getting your feet wet. If you are, then I've got some bad news for you. The amphibious models got their water bonus nerfed, so now you're just faster and consume slightly less boost. Starting with the PSP generation, the stage gimmicks are gone entirely, with the various stages focusing more on elevation and destructible cover instead. A very good example of this design shift is the new Site 7 stage this time featuring an inclining slope on the side and a flat plane with some buildings. This stage is also used in Gundam vs games to this very day, with the only notable changes to it being the obvious graphical upgrades and adjustments to the placement and quantity of the aforementioned buildings, since the PSP installments kick off the whole crossover trend when it comes to Gundam vs, the stage variety fully reflects that, ranging from Dabo's solar elevators to the Federation's arctic base from the very first episode of War in the Pocket. To my recollection, there haven't been any major changes to the stages since the PS3 generation, save for some additions to the roster, which means that this entry on stages will remain rather short. As always, there's more stuff to come, and if you happen to enjoy my shenanigans, feel free to press those buttons below the video. I'm not sure if it does something, but it might just increase some numbers. Shirtline, signing out.